air, the heat, the sea, the fire, the vibe, the bomb, the songs, the arms For God, this is a generation for God We are a generation for God You can see it in my eyes Hi, welcome to HFOG TV uh, This is Warrior Wednesday, my name is Juke uh, Creator of the Hip Hop Gospels And uh, as well as HFOG TV Um Juke World, you can check me my stuff out at jukeworld.com, J-U-K world.com, as well as holyfireofgod.com. Um, and we're finishing a series here. This is the second part uh, of a series that is just about believing. You're no longer condemned, okay, under the law, okay? You are now a child of God made righteous because of the blood of Jesus. And now with that knowledge, walking that out. I want to go over some scriptures I have here written down um, to get an understanding for what the law is, okay? Through the law, this is Romans 3.20, through the law, we are conscious of sin. Romans 3.20 says, therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. So the law, excuse me. So the law is here that we become, be, be made conscious of our sin. Uh, next one, we were legally indebted because of the law, because of sin to the law. Uh, Colossians 2, 13 through 15, it says, When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all of our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness. So we were legally indebted, which stood against us and condemned us. We were condemned. He, God, has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers of authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. The next part of the law. The law could never take away sin. Okay? Hebrews 10, 1 through 4. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it, being the law, can never by the same sacrifices, repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. All right, next thing. The law was, was, given to Mo, was given by God to Moses for the people of Israel to follow. That's just a little background. Um, Hebrews 8, 7, there is something wrong with the law. Hold on, what? Something wrong with the law. Let's go over there. Hebrews 8, 7 says, for if there had not for if there had been nothing wrong with that first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. So there's something wrong with the law, with the first covenant. Uh, Hebrews 8.13, the first covenant is now obsolete, okay? With, the, with Jesus Christ, by Jesus Christ coming, um, it says, by calling the covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete, and what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. Another thing about the law, the end goal is for God to write his law on our hearts and minds. And that's in Hebrews 8.10. So the end goal or what we need to understand where we're at now is that God would write his law on our hearts and minds. Um, Paul calls, Paul actually calls the law the ministry of death, the ministry of condemnation. In 2 Corinthians 3, 7 through 10, he says, Now if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, okay, came with glory so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of his glory, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? So he calls that the ministry of death. Next, if the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? Again, this is talking about a change. If a ministry that brought death and condemnation was glorious to where the Israelites couldn't even look upon Moses' face, how much more glorious should our lives be the ministry in the ministry of the Spirit? Okay, um, we are no longer under the law. 
Jesus fulfilled the law so that we could reign in grace. Matthew 5.17 and Romans 6.14. Um, Romans 5.20, it says the law was brought in that sin would increase. It says the law was brought in so that the trespass would increase. But where sin increased, grace inc abounded all the more. See, the law was not brought in to make you perfect. The law is perfect in itself. It is holy, righteous, but it cannot make you perfect. Um, a, good, a good book that opened my eyes to this was um, uh, a book, Destined to Reign, by Joseph Prince. And um, it, it just talks about that, you know, when we stay under the, the mindset of the law, it actually sin increases in our life. But when we understand who we are in Christ Jesus and the grace we have received and the righteousness we have received, then we begin to walk out that righteousness, believing that we ourselves are righteous because of the blood of Jesus. All right, so that's a little bit about the law. Let's talk about grace. Uh, Romans 5.17 says, through grace, we should be reigning in life. It says, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned, through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through that one man, Jesus Christ? So we should be reigning through grace. Um, another thing, we are no longer legally indebted. There is no accusation the enemy can bring against us. And again, that's over talking about um, in uh, Colossians 2, 13 through 15, that we were legally indebted, but now we are no longer legally indebted because of God's grace. Um, Hebrews 10, 9 through 18 talks about that the law could never take away our sin once and for all, but grace did take away our sin once and for all. It also talks about the first covenant being ineffective and the second one is better and forever. Um, it says, then he, Jesus, said, here I am. I have come to do your will. He, Jesus, sit, sets aside the first to establish the second, talking about the covenants. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his righteous duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest, meaning Jesus Christ, had offered for all time one sacrifice, his precious body and blood, for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. That is us. Again, 2 Corinthians 5.21, we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Uh, 1 John 2, 1 and 2. If we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. It says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate, Jesus, with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. 1 John four seventeen. it says, In this world, we are like Jesus. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9 says we have been cleansed from our sins and not knowing that causes us to still walk in sin. And then 1 John 1, 7 says, if we walk in the light, his blood purifies us. Look, we're looking at Christianity too many times as a negative argument. We say, as long as I don't do these things, I'll make it to heaven. God wants us to know we are already seated in heaven Ephesians 2, 6, and just walk out that place here in the earth, releasing heaven to a dying world around us. We argue things like, well, does that mean I'm in heaven even if I sin or no matter what I do? Why are we focusing again on sin? 
When we live out of grace, we know that we have been forgiven and there's no reason for us to even focus or think about sin anymore. We must realize that we have become new creations who no longer live in a sin nature. We just live out of the glory of his heavenly place, heavenly grace. When our eyes and hearts are fastened upon the Lord and we understand our place in his kingdom and we understand the authority we have in heaven and earth, we're no longer thinking about living in the lower state that we used to put around in. Say that you are a busboy at a restaurant, as I used to be. And you have to dump garbage and pick up food and bus tables. When you promoted to a server, you're no longer thinking, uh, how am I going to survive on the tips that bussers get? Or how am I going to deal with picking up trash anymore? Because you're now a server and you don't have those responsibilities anymore. It's the same with becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus. The problem is that there are a bunch of organizations of servers that have set themselves up as still thinking that they're bussers. And since enough people are doing it, everyone else just falls into place. Do you understand the difference of someone who is condemned because of their nature and has to do annual rituals to be forgiven and sacrifice animals to try and be forgiven and walks around with a perpetual sense of guilt and condemnation for their sins? versus someone with no guilt or condemnation, someone who believes that God has made them holy and just and just wants to tell others about that good news and that it's for everyone and just wants to walk around singing all day. Do you see the difference? That is the difference between Christian and non-Christian, or it should be. One is condemned. One is guilty. One feels their sin all over them. And one knows that, that God sees their sin as far from the east as from the west, that they, are, that they have been made whole, that they are now righteous, they are holy because of the blood of Jesus. And so they walk out that holiness. We must realize the difference and walk this out in victory because the world is dying and needs the children of light the children of life to rise up into their places, their rightful places, and begin to release the kingdom of heaven, of peace, of love, of joy, of righteousness upon that world. Um, that's all I have for y'all today, uh, Warrior Wednesday. Um, you can, uh, again, check out Juke World, J-U-K-World.com, HolyFireOfGod.com. Uh, please leave comments if you have any comments, whether you agree or disagree. And uh, I would love to hear from you. Um, and we'll see you next week on Warrior Wednesday. Yeah. Without the heat, the sea, the fire, the vibe, the bomb, the songs, the arms for God, this is a generation for God. We are a generation for God. You can see it in my eyes. The trials, the passion is real when I'm fasting. I'm smashing you cats with the seal. This is a generation for God. We are a generation. Jack, y'all, I rap acid. Spoon feed your raps that are classic.